Alright guys, here we are with your late out of date AEW Rampage review, Friday night Rampage review coming at you on a, a Saturday evening because I um, mean really after watching this I was pretty depressed, I had no life in me, I had no energy, I just sat through two hours of shite watching Smackdown, did a Smackdown review, I just didn't have it, I didn't have enough gas in the tank to do the AEW Rampage review as well. But we're going to review it now, unfortunately. So let's get this shit over with. Let's get through the show. I, I it wasn't that bad. Uh, we'll talk about what was bad. We'll talk about what was good. We'll just go in chronological order. And uh, we'll get through it that way. So we kick off AEW Rampage with the opening match. And it is John Moxley versus Ethan Page. John Moxley recently returned a couple of nights ago on AEW Dynamite. Said he was uh, thirsty for blood and all this stuff. The uh, Wild Thing music plays, out comes Moxley, brings a chair, tosses it into the ringside area. Um, he's taking on Ethan Page. Why he's taking on Ethan Page, we don't really know. Kind of just a random match, I guess. Just a return match to get Moxley into the ring. So there's no real feud going, no real storyline going here. And they, they have a match, so it wasn't, <laughs> honestly wasn't that great. Felt dead watching it. I, I'm not a fan of Ethan Page and I've not never been the biggest fan of John Moxley. In my opinion, uh, Moxley is a pretty terrible in-ring worker. I just don't like the guy. To me, he's more suited to those uh, you know, hardcore wrestlers like that Nick Cage guy. He should he'd be better off going to those um, you know, promotions where they like mutilate their cell. I think that's more Moxley's thing. When it comes to wrestling, he's just not really he's just not a good wrestler. It is what it is. He beats Ethan Page with like a chokehold. After the match, it was weird. Moxley hanging about the ring. Ethan Page is refusing to kind of leave. I thought Ethan Page was going to attack Moxley. Looks like he intends to actually shake his hand, but Moxley isn't interested. It hits a paradigm shift, and um, that's it. His music plays again. Wild thing. Down, 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 down. He walks off through the crowd again. And he encounters a wee man, and it turns out that wee man is Brian Danielson. And see Danielson in the crowd, that he looked like a child that lost his parents. That's how fucking small this guy is. He legit does not stand out. Just wearing a plain white tee, uh, about five foot tall. I mean, he, when he say, when he turned around and Moxley seen him, Moxley was probably going to ask him if he needs help find his parents. That's that's what Daniel Bryan looks like, in my opinion, inside the crowd. Like. What actually happened to wrestlers, where you, have you seen them in the crowd, they would just stick out like a sore thumb, but, I mean, Daniel Bryan blended it in, just looked like everyone else. So, uh, that's what happened, not a lot, apparently these guys have history in Ring of Honor, I mean, who fucking cares? Is that the next feud then, Daniel Bryan versus John Moxley, who knows? Uh, Taz says we haven't seen Bryan Danielson in forever. And it's kind of true, well, it's not forever, it's been a few weeks, like, but still, really a, a lackluster debut for Daniel Bryan, comes into the company, quickly gets into a title feud with Adam Page, loses and then just disappears. Uh, so I thought AEW was supposed to build up people properly and treat everyone great and have all these good storylines and all this stuff and they do pro wrestling correctly apparently yet Daniel Bryan loses and we don't see him for like three weeks. Um, yeah, I don't know what they're doing with Daniel Bryan but it's certainly not good. I'm not even going to get started on CM Punk, <laughs> the worst return of all time. Uh, but anyway, we move on then to a backstage segment where um, we get the Jurassic Express basically saying that they're going to beat their next uh, opponents and they're going to stomp some heads. This was pretty shit. Nothing nothing good happened here. Then we had Nick Jackson versus Trent Barretta. Um, the Young Bucks aren't good as a team and they're even worse when they're individuals. Just, there's just nothing to these guys. Uh, Trent Barretta, who I would consider like a major bum, actually beat Nick Jackson. So kind of surprised with that. I guess the I guess Cassidy was at ringside. Um, the other Beretta guy, no, the other um, Jackson was at ringside. I guess these few these stables are in a bit of a feud. Best friends or whatever are kind of feuding with uh, whatever they're called, the Bullet Club or well, I don't know Jackson and Adam Pay Adam Cole or whatever. Um, nothing great to see here though. Trent Beretta wins again. Pretty dead match. Nothing happening. 
And um, yeah, Trent Barretta wins, but I mean, who cares, honestly? Then we've got a backstage segment with Merce Mercedes, Martinez and Funda Rosa, the rivalry getting hyped. I mean, it's, it's a rivalry that nobody cares about, so you can't hype me if I don't care about it, and I certainly don't care about this. Then we had Hook versus Serpentico, aka some lawnmower wearing a mask. Hook beats him in about 10 seconds. Absolute jobber match, squash match. Uh, Hook's leaving the ring. Uh, J D D D T JT Marshall comes out and he takes a suplex on the ramp. Um, don't quite understand that. Um, and then he just steps over him and walks to the back. So I just don't look, I don't like the look of this hook guy, right? To me, he looks more like he belongs in a boy band. I kind of expect to see him more in like one direction, or he looks more like one of the Jonas brothers rather, you know, than Taz's son, rather than a guy. I mean, in the ring, don't get me wrong, in the ring, I, I like the guy and he seems good. And uh, I think, you know, from an in ring standpoint view, that he's got potential, but. It's just his appearance, you know, he, he just doesn't look like a killer like his dad. He, he looks more like a, a pop singer, and I think that is a bit of a problem. Then we moved on to Mark Henry's pre-main event interview, where he interviewed Jade Cargo, he interviewed Anna J. They're competing for the TBS women's title, and this match was actually pretty good, I thought. I know a lot of people don't like Jade Cargo. They don't think she's good in ring, but, I mean, I kind of have no complaints. I thought this match was pretty solid, uh... Looked like on a number of occasions Anna Jay was going to pick up the win. She had a lot of momentum. She seemed to, you know, towards the end of the match, she she was hitting Jade Cargo with pretty much everything she had. She locked in her finisher. Jade Cargo managed to get out of it. She went for another spin kick in the corner of the rope. Jade Cargo countered it into like a choke slam, one hand at choke slam, and then she hit her finisher, which I'm not too sure what it's called, it's, it kind of looked like the Glamis on Beth Phoenix slam, looked a bit the Glam slam, looked a bit like that, and that was enough to get Jade Cargill the win, unfortunately during this match, I was distracted by that fucking John Silver guy, he, he looks like Hornswoggle, two foot tall, running about the ring, just taking away for this match, I don't get the Dark Order, it's a bunch of fucking bums thrown together, like Anna Jay, why is this attractive chick in the Dark Order? Why is she hanging around with a bunch of fucking imbeciles? Makes no sense. Honestly, I don't get it. I thought Anna Jay looked pretty good tonight in the ring. And uh, yeah, it was a good main event. The match itself was good. But did we need these other two people running around the ringside? Did we need to see uh, AEW's version of Hornswoggle out there? No, I don't think we did. Uh, and then when Jade Cargill's celebrating her win, it pops up in the back and says she's 25 and oh as the show goes off the air. So, uh, you know what it is, it is what it is, guys. Rampage is essentially the AWB show. I don't think they're going to put too much... No, they're not going to put anything too important on Rampage, although we have had the debut of CM Punk. Why? I do not know. I thought that was a terrible decision. That should have been on Dynamite. But, I mean, overall... The main event was decent. It's only an hour. It's not... I mean, I'd, I'd probably rather watch Rampage than watch Raw, to be honest. Fucking watching three hours of Raw is, is pretty shit. Not gonna lie. It was alright. I don't... I like Hook. The main event was decent. Trent Barretta match just killed me. I had no interest in that. And uh, I'm not a big fan of Moxley either. I'll give it a 2 out of 10. I think that's me being fair. I'll give it a 2 out of 10. Or maybe a 1 out of 10. I don't know. But no, I'll give it a 2. I'll give it a 2. The main event was good. The main event was alright. It's not often I give praise to AEW, but you know what? The main event, considering Jade Cargo apparently can't wrestle, and Anna Jay's not that good either, they, they put on a good match. So it is what it is, guys. I'm giving this a 2 out of 10. Let us know what you thought down below. Leave your likes, comments, subscriptions, all that stuff. And until next time, peace.